In the realm of 1980s television, Max Headroom emerged as a groundbreaking series that seamlessly blended dystopian elements with a keen commentary on media culture. The show, set in a future dominated by relentless networks and unbridled corporate influence, introduced the iconic character Max Headroom, a computer-generated entity with a wry sense of humor. What enduring qualities do you think make this TV series an everlasting symbol of the industry? One of the series' defining moments lies in its exploration of the blurred boundaries between reality and media manipulation. The fragmented, fast-paced narrative mirrors the frenetic pace of contemporary media providing a stark reflection of the societal concerns prevalent in the late 20th century. Is there a particular scene or moment in this TV series that has had a lasting impact on you? Now, let's delve into some intriguing facts about Max Headroom. The character originated from a British-made television film, eventually evolving into a full-fledged series that captivated audiences with its innovative use of computer-generated imagery. The show's satirical take on corporate greed and the unchecked power of media resonated strongly during its time and continues to offer relevant insights into our media-saturated world. As we explore the intricacies of Max Headroom, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Max Headroom, a groundbreaking television series that debuted in 1987, originated from a British made-for-TV movie titled Max Headroom, 20 minutes into the future. The show, set in a dystopian future dominated by powerful television networks, revolves around Edison Carter, an investigative journalist, and his AI-generated alter ego, Max Headroom. Following a near-fatal accident, Carter's consciousness is duplicated in the form of Max, a quirky and glitchy digital personality with a flair for satirical commentary on media and corporate control. The series explores the consequences of unchecked media influence, corporate greed, and the blurred line between reality and virtuality. Max, with his staccato speech and glitchy demeanor, became an iconic character, symbolizing the dehumanizing effects of mass media. The show's unique visual style, characterized by vibrant colors, rapid editing, and innovative camera techniques, reflected the emerging cyberpunk aesthetic of the late 80 seconds. Max Headroom left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing subsequent sci-fi narratives, and shaping discussions around the ethical implications of media manipulation. Despite its relatively short run, the series remains a cult classic celebrated for its prescient commentary on the intersection of technology and society, making it a timeless exploration of the dark side of media dominance. In the world of Max Headroom, the setting is a puzzle. Although the exact time remains uncertain, the series suggests a backdrop of 2005-2006, as hinted by Bryce Lynch's records, indicating his birth in October 1988. This ambiguity adds a layer of intrigue to the dystopian narrative. Originally airing in 1989, the UK's Channel 4 showcased Max Headroom as a 14-episode season. To avoid confusion with Channel 4's other formats, the Warner Bros. TV, Lorimer Telepictures version is sometimes labeled The Adventures of Max Headroom. This distinction reflects the complexity of its broadcast history. The genesis of the name Max Headroom is a tale of high-speed evasion. As Edison Carter fled security guards on a motorcycle, he encountered a parking garage exit gate labeled Max Headroom. His subsequent coma led to Bryce Lynch downloading Carter's memory into a computer, and the computer-generated persona adopted the name, setting the stage for the iconic character's emergence. This blend of speculative future, broadcast intricacies, and the origin of Max's moniker shapes the multifaceted world of Max Headroom, where narrative nuances intertwine with technological intrigue providing viewers with a unique and thought-provoking television experience. In the 1987 TV series Max Headroom, the iconic Max Headroom sign holds a significant backstory. It serves as the British equivalent of maximum clearance. This symbolic detail adds depth to the dystopian narrative, hinting at a world where limits are pushed, both in terms of technology and societal norms. The series, featuring Matt Frewer, Amanda Pays, and William Morgan Shepard, saw these actors as the sole ones retained from the original UK version. 
Their presence links the two iterations and highlights the continuity within the Max Headroom universe. Notably, all the PCs at Network 23, a central element in the show, were Commodore 128 seconds. This choice of technology reflects the speculative future portrayed in Max Headroom and offers a glimpse into the imagined technological landscape of the late 80 seconds. These details, whether in character continuity, symbolic signage, or tech choices, contribute to the intricate world-building of Max Headroom. Each element adds a layer of authenticity to the narrative, creating a captivating and cohesive viewing experience. On November 27, 1987, the 1987 TV series Max Headroom took an unexpected turn when a man wearing a Max Headroom mask hijacked U.S. television station WGN Channel 9 in Chicago. Infamously, he managed to hack into the station during a local news bulletin for 30 seconds, and later during a repeat of Doctor Who's episode, Doctor Who, Horror of Fang Rock, Part 1, for 90 seconds. The masked intruder stared into the camera, delivering a surreal monologue, nonsensical and distorted. His antics included mocking TV host Charles Swirsky, handling a Pepsi can while saying Coca-Cola's slogan, and even discussing his piles. Despite multiple attempts, the identity of the hijacker remains unknown. This bizarre incident added an unexpected layer to the Max Headroom legacy, showcasing the extent of the character's influence beyond scripted narratives. The intrusion, marked by the eerie Max Headroom mask, left an indelible mark on the intersection of television, technology, and real-world events in the late 80 seconds. The 1987 TV series Max Headroom, known for its cyberpunk aesthetic and social commentary, was not just confined to its scripted content. The surreal intrusion on WGN Channel 9 demonstrated the character's ability to transcend the television screen and enter the realm of real-world media disruptions, making Max Headroom not just a fictional persona but a symbol with unexpected cultural impact. This incident highlighted the blurred lines between fiction and reality, a theme central to the show itself. The mysterious hijacking serves as a unique starting point for delving into the multifaceted world of Max Headroom, where the character's influence extended far beyond the confines of the TV series. In a potential five-year run, Matt Frewer hinted at the challenges of enduring the Max makeup. The iconic character's demanding aesthetic could have posed a hurdle for the actor. However, the series was cut short, leaving the extent of Frewer's struggle speculative. Interestingly, renowned cyberpunk author William Gibson crafted a script for the show, showcasing his admiration for Max Headroom. Unfortunately, the cancellation intervened, and Gibson's script never made it to production, leaving fans to ponder what could have been a unique addition to the series. Following Max Headroom's cancellation, the sitcom Mr. Belvedere stepped in, intending to fill the void. Initially planned as a short-lived replacement, the unexpected happened. The show not only continued but added 88 episodes beyond its initial cancellation date, defying expectations. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the untold stories surrounding Max Headroom. From the potential struggles of its lead actor to the unrealized contributions of a celebrated author and the unexpected fate of its successor, Mr. Belvedere. As we bid adieu to the captivating world of Max Headroom, let the echoes of the iconic 1987 TV series linger in your thoughts. Delve into the recesses of your memories and unearth the moments that made Max Headroom a timeless gem. Was it the groundbreaking narrative that pushed the boundaries of conventional storytelling? Perhaps it was the enigmatic charm of Max himself, a digital entity with a human touch, navigating the realms of a dystopian future. Or maybe it's the vivid tapestry of cyberpunk aesthetics woven into every frame, transporting you to a realm where technology and humanity collide in a mesmerizing dance. Now, it's your turn to be the storyteller. Share your fondest memories, the scenes etched in your mind, and the impact Max Headroom had on your perception of the digital age. Unleash the floodgates of nostalgia and let your reflections become a testament to the enduring power of this masterpiece. As we revel in the collective tapestry of shared experiences, let's celebrate the connectivity that transcends time and space. Your voice adds another layer to the rich narrative of Max Headroom, making it more than just a series. It's a shared journey through the corridors of imagination. Thank you for embarking on this retrospective adventure with us. Your memories are the threads that weave the fabric of our collective appreciation for Max Headroom.
Until we meet again in the vast expanse of shared recollections, thank you for your time, your thoughts, and your connection to this timeless classic. Reflect, reminisce, and share your Max Hedrum story with the world.